G'day guys, Todd here from Offroad Crusader. We're inside the 200 series and we are going to do a quick video on how to fix one of the most lacking features I believe on most modern vehicles and especially the 200 series and that is a lack of USB charging ports. Now in the front obviously you've got a few different options of what you can do. In the back there's a heap of different options but there's nothing really off the shelf to do. Um, and to be honest I haven't seen anyone really show how to do it so we're going to go through it today. On the back here of the center console there is a single cigarette port um, sorry, cigarette socket, which is switched to your normal um, uh, ignition power, only turns on when the car is on and has pretty small wiring running to it. So that's not the greatest. Uh, yes, you can use it. It's a bit of a kick hazard where it is at the moment. Um, and I think it could be a little bit better. So we're going to install one of these. So this is a USB charging um, port that I got off of eBay. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and I have run one of these in my drawer system in the back of the car. It's fantastic. It's got two USB outlets, which are QC uh, three, so fa super fast charging, as well as a USB-C charging port, which is fantastic. It is round, it fits exactly where your cigarette port could go. Um, however, we are going to install it in addition to this. Um, so for whatever reason, I do need a SIG port. I do still have that option, um, but we're going to put it in this panel here in the center. Now, depending on various models of 200 series, you'll obviously have slight differences on the back here. Uh, this is a 2017 VX model. Um, so I have the rear aircon, uh, so therefore I have the controls on the back there. I know the GXLs may have something different. I think the Saharas have got like media control stuff for their fancy rear DVD screens, in which case these may not fit, and I cannot make a comment on whether it does. I'm pretty sure it will, but um, you never know. Anyway, we're going to pull this all apart and I'll show you how to do it. So um, yeah, sit back, grab a cup of Ricoldi, and we're going to go through how to install an accessory socket into the rear of the center console on your 200 series. So the first thing you're going to want to do is move your front seats as far forward as possible. This just makes everything a little bit easier with your access to get into the car. Um, once your seats are as far forward as you can go, you have a bit more room. <laughs> Obviously get rid of all your kid stuff in the back. This back panel is not held on by any screws. You can just pop it off whenever you, whenever you want to. <laughs> so I've just got a trim removal tool. Basically I'm going to put it between this outer panel um, and the actual center console and just push it through and you'll find the whole thing will just remove from the back of the console oh, like that so you can see on the back of the panel here there's, there's it's pretty simple of what's going on um, you can remove this from the car completely if you want to um, there are obviously all these electrical plugs and stuff to take off but you do not need to uh, the part that we're interested in is this center piece here it is held in place by these two screws which you can either do with undo with a um, phillips head or with a 10 mil um, socket I'm just going to do the socket just because it's a little bit easier. You will need to remove this um, plug holder here. And to do that, all you do is just take a little screwdriver. There's a little white prong here right next to the black section. Put your little screwdriver between the two. Pull the whole plug assembly up and away you go. So that removes that. We can push our little panel out the way. There it is there. And we're going to take it to the workbench and install our um, socket. So now we've got our piece on the workbench, so that's our little panel there. Um, I've just got a tea towel down on my workbench so I don't scuff this all up and make it look horrible. Um, now we have three different options of where we can actually mount our accessory socket. There's in the center, there's all you've got your two sides there. So there's sort of, you divide it into thirds and there's sort of those areas. Now if you're looking, if you're sitting in the middle, middle row seat and looking forward and you're looking at this panel, which is like so, um, the spot towards the passenger side of the vehicle, which is this bit here, um, behind that is the air conducting for the rear air conducts. Um, there is a chance that it should fit there. Now you've got to imagine that, that obviously is going to sit through the plastic um, and protrude a little bit behind. You've then also got your wiring lugs off the back of that. So you do want to allow a bit of space behind your panel for all your wiring and stuff to go. It may fit there. Um, however, you've also got your center and also your other side as well. Um, for this scenario, I'm actually going to put it in the center because I'm probably going to use it either to the left or to the right, and it'd be nice to have it just right in the center, easy to find. So that's where I'm going to put it now. 
Um, so the way we're going to do that is basically using our panel, we're going to find our centre mark. Um, so I've just got a steel rule. Oh, that's quite handy. So on the back of the trim, you can see it's got a um, part number stamp on the back of it. So the scratch on the bottom is centre left to right. And then if you go up from there and find the centre again, it's in the middle of that P. Um, I don't know if Toyota did that on purpose, I doubt it. But if you're looking for the centre, find that uh, part number, little P right in the centre there under their clip. That's your centre mark there. So now we've found our centre mark, we're going to drill a hole through this so that our socket can fit through it. Now the benefit of doing this this way, obviously you can put a socket wherever you want, but for whatever reason you decide you don't like it, it's not working out, you destroy, you know, things just aren't working in the install process. This little part here probably costs about 10, 20 bucks from, from Toyota um, and would be easy enough to replace. Whereas if you had that whole centre console unit, um, obviously it's going to be a lot more to replace, a lot more dollars and a lot of other stuff you have to do. So if you're going to start um, hacking up bits in the car, try and find little panels like this that you can replace easy. Um, and then for whatever reason down the track you need to replace it, it's easy enough to do. So we're going to drill a hole through this. The best way to do it is with a step drill. So here I've got a step drill there. That goes all the way out to I think it's 30 mil. So we know where it abouts it's going to go. Um, you can see there's a bit of a ridge there uh, to help with the rigidity of this. Uh, that's obviously going to get in the way of our uh, drilling. So I'm just going to remove a snippet out of that now so that our drill bit's going to work fine. Just going to use my side cutters and just cut this bit. Probably try and fold it down a little bit as well. I'm going to drill my hole through here now. I'm up with my center mark. Got a nice little spot in the table I used for drilling these. So once we've got our spot there, I do like to try and do all my measurements and my first drill from the back of the piece of plastic. Um, it just helps to locate it all. It's usually a little bit easier and that way you don't end up scuffing all this with, um, with your measurements and stuff like that. Then from there I can flip the piece of plastic over and drill from there. Because this is a step drill bit, it will actually round the sort of outside edge of that really nicely. So we're just going to keep going. So I have actually drilled that out to 30 mil in diameter. I can now check that this actually fits quite snug in there and I'm, I'm quite happy with that fit. Um, and I know that when that's on there, we're gonna put this sort of locking collar on the back. So it does have like a screw and that'll come down and lock that in place. You may need to remove some extra plastic off the back there. Uh, like this locating thing is gonna to have to be moved, uh, gonna be trimmed a little bit around the bottom. And then that uh, nuts will come down, lock that in place. I am also going to use a little round edge file just on the outside here just to help clean up some of these edges um, and make it a little bit nicer. So you can use a file like this, it does just help to neaten everything up. Don't have to, but definitely helps to make your job look a little bit more professional. So there we have it, that's our USB socket all installed in there. That's sitting in there really snug, which I quite like, um, and that's how it's going to look. It does have this nice little rubber dust cover. Just make sure that's obviously orientated up the right way. If you look on the back of this trim, You'll see there's two big plastic lugs, those are the bottom, so they're going towards the floor of the car. So obviously just keep that in mind when you're actually orientating everything on the top there. Alright, let's go put this back in the car and then we can get on to wiring it. So your panel can just get installed back into the actual housing. So just pull it around the, around the back there, it'll clip into place. And then you can put your two um, screws back in place, that just holds it all in. So that's the main install of the accessory socket all done. And you can see with that there, it actually looks quite nice. Um, like I said, you can mount that obviously to the left or right of there. To the left of it, towards the passenger side, is there's not quite as much room behind the panel. On this side there is as well. Um, however, <laughs> I'm a stickler for symmetry, so I'm gonna stick in the middle. Moving on from here, there's then the, the task of wiring your accessory socket. And you've got two options really going forward from here. You can either choose to run it to a factory um, accessory wire. So this socket is only live when the car is turned on. Um, and if you're going to do that, you've already got power ran to the back of this um, panel, which is to the cigarette socket. You may want to replace the cigarette socket entirely so that the cigarette socket's gone and you're just going to use this new one. Or you may want to tap into it so you can obviously have both running at the same time. That's completely up to you. And if you want to do that, all your wiring's there ready to go nice and easy. But for me, I want this socket to be powered on all the time. I want to use it to charge things like my, my cameras and my, my drones. I want to be able to charge phones. I want to be able to do whatever I want with these USB ports. So um, I want them to be live all the time. I've actually already ran a live wire from the battery through a fuse. So I've got a, I think it's a 15 amp fuse on there um, that's run into the center console and I'm running a USB port in the front, which is constant power from the battery. 
That's obviously quite specific to what I want to do with the car. Um, I'm not going to go through it because it's quite specific. But if you want to go ahead and do a similar thing on your install, uh, there's plenty of room on this center console to run a wire around the storage bin to the front underneath the center console. From there, you can either tap off or go under the dash or do whatever you want to do from there. So I'm going to make a start and uh, wire that all in so it's all ready to go. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. A few moments later. So now that all the wiring's done, we can put this panel back in place for the final time. Um, if you've got a floor mat in the back, you may want to remove it because it sort of gets in the way a little bit. Um, you'll be able to see a number of lugs that sort of line up um, at certain points in the uh, plastic. But the main point is getting the top in and making sure that's all lined up. And you should be able to feel on the side if any clips broken off. If not, push it home. And we're done and dusted. That's all done. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. That is the install of a USB charging slot into the back of a 200 series center console. Um, and um, I think it's added a lot of functionality to this back seat. I can now charge stuff on the go. Um, can Would be great for when the kids are a little bit older and they need to charge devices. Or if we just need more charging ports from in the front, we can always run a cord from the, from the back to the front and we're all good to go there. If you want to see more simple, quick and easy installs like this one, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think and uh, what else you'd like to see me install in this 200 series because I'm more than open to lots of ideas <laughs> of cool little gadgets and gizmos to improve the functionality of this car while we go camping. If you want to support the channel further, head to my merch page, which is offroadcrusader.bigcartel.com and check out the range of different merch that we have available. We've got cool shirts like this one. We've got stickers on there. We've got some awesome new patches coming as well soon, which is really exciting. Can't wait for you guys to see those. If you want to just support the channel even further, there's also a Patreon page as well, where some absolute legends are long-term patrons and they've been helping out the channel for a long time and getting me to this point here. So massive thank you to my patrons. Thank you for watching. All right, well, I've wrapped this install up just in time to go and pick my little boy up from daycare. So I'm gonna head off. I'll catch you guys next time on Offer Crusader. Cheers.